Anyone else? A scale? Does it rule your life? It ruled mine for many, many years. It's covered in dust. <laughs> so I wanted to find a different way to judge my progress other than this thing, because I hate this thing. They are a great judge of progress sometimes, but anytime anything starts to rule your life or have the ability to make you feel bad about yourself, we need to look at that. So I'm off to figure out a different way to judge my body composition as I'm getting ready for the Spartan race, which is an episode coming up. My name is Jeff Rothschild. I'm a registered dietitian and a board certified specialist in sports dietetics. We do exercise testing that tells things like your VO2 max. So it's kind of like your overall aerobic capacity. It also tells us if you're burning fat and carbohydrate the way you should be during exercise and how much. And then we can also then use that information to inform your diet to make sure you're eating the right way to get the most out of your training sessions. My endurance is not good though. That's okay. when it starts to get, so if I run outside, I'm taxed a lot faster. And then I have asthma, okay. but I push through it. Couldn't okay. even find my inhaler this morning. So. Oh, okay. Should we be worried? No. Okay. No, um, okay. I recover really fast, even when I do have one without the inhaler, so. Great, and um, have you eaten today? No, I had this much coffee okay, like perfect. an hour Great. ago. Great. So first we're going to do a uh, body composition. And first we'll get your height right here. You stand there and face up. I don't even know what it is. I've lied about it so many times to try and get movies with Tom Cruise that I don't even know how tall I am four, anymore. Four foot eleven. <laughs> exactly. Four foot eleven. <laughs> Yay! Call me Tom. I think I'm like five six and a quarter. Uh, we got you right on five six. Ooh, here. bang on. Do here is get your body composition. And this way we do it before the test. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it sends a signal around your body and because fat and muscle conduct electricity differently, it essentially knows how much fat, fluid, and water is in your body and where it's located because there's these eight different points that she's connecting and so the time it takes to go around the body, it's, it's pretty awesome. That's very it's cool. It's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> we have been basically sort of like on vacation since December uh, and I was at my working when we were filming, my body sits a little lower for work, so I was pretty confident I was 150 pounds, okay. but... <laughs> what do you weigh? 144. 144. Ooh. Remember in the beginning how I talked about how I've broken my addiction to the scale? Yeah. <laughs> Guys! There. Oh my god, it's so high. Well, no. yeah, everyone thinks that. Like 99% like of people that have ever looked at their body fat percentage, probably in history. But you see, it's the low end of normal. Yeah, normally I'm around like 16 or 17. Measured how? On a machine where you hold on. Similar to someone to this, but different one. Yeah, but those are probably less accurate. Like, you'd be very unhealthy at 16%. Mm -hmm. For women, like 20 is kind of a good cutoff. Well, there's room to healthily lose weight. I like, usually get that kind of down to that. Cut the border of like low and normal. Mm -hmm. um, 16 would not, like a true 16 would not be you know, uh, ideal. Hmm. That's disappointing. 22%? That freaked me out a little bit. Did you see my face? Yeah. I don't really think that that's very healthy to be that ruled by any of this stuff. Because I've actually been really happy. <laughs> enjoying life and eating and drinking. Obviously, it had an effect on my body fat. What you perceive as 16 might yeah. really be 19. Right, right, right. So, right. so I think getting lucky is fun, right. but right. Not getting caught up in the numbers. So and, and if, if you measure five different like, types of machines, you get five different numbers, but the key is that like, here's your year today, right. you can move it down 3%, for example, or right. right, so it's more important to test on the same machine every time than exactly. to do... Yes. Big time. Yeah. And we can see how much muscle you have. Uh, so it's 53 pounds of muscle, and we can see where it's located, your left arm, torso, right arm, left leg, and right leg. So that's the high end of normal. So that's excellent. Um, uh, you can see how you compare to the average person for muscle mass. The bullseye is a 50th percentile, and you're like the 6th percentile. So. Excellent. And then the other important thing from a health standpoint is visceral fat. So that's if we chopped it in half that way and looked down, the fat between our organs and all this is essentially none. So that's huge. Awesome. Yeah, that's the most important thing for health. Right. So kudos. It's funny you say that because all I'm focused on is 22% fat. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's going to bum me out the rest of the day. It is. It's, it's like, yeah. Uh, it's no, I mean, I know I'm just, bigger right now than I normally am, but like. Oh, you were, see, you were just happy from two minutes ago when you were 144 instead of 150. I know. That's why we're doing this. 
Yeah. So you get that a lot with people, I imagine, then their reactions are... Yeah, because you watch on TV and someone says, like, a football player or someone is, like, 3% body fat, and that's just not, not true. Right. Bodybuilders on stage that look completely like, like, that's maybe 3 or 4%, and no one walks, they don't walk around like that. Right. Guys and girls. So mm -hmm. um, the girls are probably maybe higher, um, say, 7 or 8%. For them, that's not a sustainable thing. Right. When you see fitness models on, on like magazine covers, that's they don't stay like that all the time and they feel like complete garbage. Right. But forget forget about the number twenty two, like you can say, Okay, here's where I am and I need to get like five pounds or, five, or some percent down. Mm -hmm. But don't like the number it's it's completely useless. So I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, okay, whatever dude. Let's go run. Yeah. But just remember how happy you were that you're not 150 and you're 144. The character that I play on this show is like incredibly lean and so I was at like 134 pounds and it looked like I had no body fat. How, how were your like your hormones? Did you have a regular cycle? Everything was great. My period actually started coming early. Got irregular. It did get irregular. I feel like we talk about my period way too much on this channel. Or maybe not enough. Who's with me? Period talk? As soon as we were done filming, like within a month, it went back to normal. And I think I only yeah. gained like three pounds and it was back to normal. So that was probably right on the cusp. And if you had continued losing or continued even staying there, it would have, you know, you would have probably lost it or something, right. you know, which is not good. That's a canary in the coal mine. Really? Big time. Not just for babies, though. No, no, that's what's so. So many athletes like are happy when they don't, yeah. them, especially like in, in their twenties, early twenties and things. Yeah. Um, but no, that, that means your hormones are say, flatlined or not, not doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That affects things like your bone density. Mm -hmm. That affects, the, I mean, it's actually so many things. It's easier to list the things that doesn't affect. Yeah. Um, but critically bone density. Huh. Um, Which is so you know, you'll see important like for women. 25 year old runners having osteoporosis. Yeah. It's not good. Right. Got so. it. Guys, osteoporosis runs in my family. That's actually really scary and good to know. A lot of people react the same way that I did. Yeah, I'm like, 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 so like, depressed now. We run three minute stages yeah. until she kind of hits a certain point, and then we do one one minute stages. Uh, okay, gotcha. Once she's passed essentially her sustainable pace, then we want to get her to a max fairly quickly. I could have gone more, but like, I could okay, feel my asthma, like, and yeah, I started to get dizzy. Yeah, well, that's good that you stopped. It reminded me of Biodome. Then the top of Blue Velvet. Oh, I'm slutty. Oh, I'm slutty. <laughs> Polly Shore, Stephen Baldwin. I feel really old. And like, I have terrible taste in movies. It hurts, right? Yeah. It's getting really hard. I wanted to get to 20. 20 minutes? Yeah. At this speed, essentially, she could hold there kind of for a while, but once she starts going there, it's not sustainable. How do you feel? Now I feel fine. It's amazing how quickly you can go from like feeling like terrible yeah. and panicking to like. Yeah. I didn't want to do what I normally do, which is push to the point where I'm dizzy because of competition. I mean, yeah, we got up to 175 heart rate, so that's it's pretty darn close to max. Yeah. I felt like I could have gone for another 20 minutes, but with the mask on and at that elevation, that was not fun. To find out that like at a 3% incline, running at an 8.5, I maxed out. That's not gonna get me through the Spartan race. So that was disappointing. The only thing that was exciting about that was my weight. Here's to see what he says. Yeah, I'm very serious too. It was fun though. I kind of like being a guinea pig for you people. Like, I'm still for you. And we'll look at your results okay. here first. So, um, what we'll see here, we have the blue line is your heart rate. Yellow is percent fat and, per and gray is percent carb being burned. Okay. On the bottom we have the speeds of each okay. stage and these are the last 30 second averages of each of these tests. Okay. Right, each speed, okay. On the top is your oxygen consumption. Okay. So your heart rate is of course going to go up. Right. The, we always 
use more carbs as the exercise intensity increases, okay. you can look at each of these speeds and the percentage of carbon fat. So even at six miles an hour, which you felt like was a pretty easy jog, your body is burning prim primarily carbohydrate. So you haven't eaten anything, right? but you're still burning a lot of carbohydrate. So where does that come from? That comes from being stored inside your muscle and then also stores in our liver. So during exercise in our liver, one of its jobs is to keep our blood sugar from dropping so it cranks up its output of glucose. So to, to think or to say like, I'm gonna be burning fat because I didn't eat, that's not the case actually. Okay. You're burning some fat and actually, so this is a percentage, relative percentage. Here we can see how many calories you're burning per hour at each of these heart rates. So if you held one, a 130 heart rate for an hour, you'd burn about 500 calories. Well, a 170, and it's 872 calories. Okay. And so if we go to 170, that's about a speed of 7.5 miles an hour. So that's 88% of those calories are from carbohydrate. So you're burning some fat. And if we look, actually this other one, we see this is your fat burning kind of like absolute, this is grams per minute. So the other one's percentage. So actually you're burning your most fat around a heart rate of 165. Okay. So in the lower intensities, it is more fat dependent, and in the higher intensities, it's carbohydrate dependent. Right, so that's why if you're running a long distance, you need those little goo packs and stuff, right? Because it's carbohydrates? Yes, yeah, because we start with these stores, and if you run a short distance, you're fine. And then there's some gray area where you can or cannot use it, but then a marathon, people hit that wall because their, their internal tanks are out of gas. Right, got it, okay. We also have that VO2 max. Yeah. We talked about yours was 46.6 and superior for females between 30 to 39. Anything over it's a little hard to see, but 40 is considered superior. So yours was 46.6. So kudos. You're mm. superior. <laughs> you're, well, I mean, I knew that. You're I'm just kidding. <laughs> now you're officially superior. I feel like we should rewind that. <laughs> so kudos. You're mm. superior. I'm a dork. So um, what does that mean? So that means, though? yeah, that's that total yeah. amount of oxygen that your body can process. So if I started working out more intensely, this my VO2 max can go up, right? Yep. Okay. So the, the women's world record marathon holder, her VO2 max was around 70. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. But one of the other takeaways is, you, know, you are burning carbs during exercise, because you're running a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you exercise for an hour, and at even this average heart rate somewhere in the middle, that's gonna be, even six, seven hundred calories, yeah. most of which are from carbohydrate. Yeah. So that's um, probably 120 grams of carbohydrate you're burning, which would be like yeah, two, two and a half cups of rice. Yeah. Just Don't be afraid of carbohydrates, people. It's true. I eat a ton of carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like so and at the same time, you, you know, in a given workout, like I said, you might be burning six, seven hundred calories pretty easily in an hour. So if you don't work out in a day, um, while you're traveling or sick or whatever, like there's a pretty, I mean, it's like a Chipotle bowl difference in what you're actually burning. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, important. And so, so it's not the worst. Like you, you shouldn't eat the same calories every day, because if you do a short workout or no workout or a hard workout, like that needs to vary. It's so interesting. I've never thought about it this much before. It's always just my weight. For how many calories for me to be eating on a daily basis? Not to necessarily. Well, depends on how much exercise you have. Right. It, mm -hmm. The most simple thing is say 1500 plus exercise. Okay. 1500 calories plus whatever you think you're burning during exercise. And I know, even, I mean, depending on the type of exercise you're doing, it's going to be different. But if you want to look at your average heart rate, that'll give you a rough approximation. Yeah. Um, or your watches will, you know, various things will estimate it for you. But if you just said 1500 plus, if you do an hour exercise, there's called 700. So that's 2200. And yeah. Kinda, that's actually just, a really great way to look at it because I can sit there and I can take this list. And, and figure out how much I've worked out for the day and how hard I worked yeah, out. And, sort of. and without even like micromanaging it, just think somewhere between about five and 900. So okay. 500 for an easy workout, 900 for a hard workout per okay. hour, and then split the difference just on your perceived overall exertion of the session. Right, that's such a nice way to look at it now. Like it's actually have like a real number. Yeah. Which is good. No, I actually have to count calories. No, 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 you don't, I don't think you do necessarily. Yeah. I would start by kind of, well, you can't but it's kind of a pain and it's, it's hard. Maybe you do it for a couple days and just kind of get a sense of what a 1500 calorie day looks like and a 2500 calorie day and then you kind of can take it from there. Mm -hmm. But you need to have the latitude and do the low hanging fruit and you're exercising, you're seeing it progress. You've already seen the four pounds that you weren't expecting or five, six pounds. So you might just kind of take you most of the way there without worrying about it. And then you can kind of worry about it. Right. But for now, there's no reason to 
yeah. change what you're doing. One of the things that I really learned from this was that I needed to start running more to be ready for that Spartan race that was coming up so quickly after we did this uh, testing. Uh, another thing that I learned is that I still have a lot of work to do on possibly some body dysmorphia. I was actually really disappointed in the way that those numbers being thrown at me seemed to affect my mood. I thought that I had actually done some really great work on this, and I have, but I think I have some more to do. If you guys enjoyed this episode, subscribe, make sure to set those alerts, and come back next week where you're going to see me actually training for this Spartan race and what that looked like. Bye! Because <laughs> it's balanced on my bun. It's like perfectly balanced. I feel like I could actually like run a 5k with this scale on my head.